Welcome to Yoga Berry, your yoga for scoliosis community. My name is Christine Jaregi Berry. I'm a yoga teacher specializing in yoga for scoliosis. And today we're going to talk about back bending because I've had a lot of questions in my Facebook community about this topic um, to know if back bending is safe for scoliosis and if there is a way to make it safer which is exactly what we'll be doing today. So what you will need for this practice is a yoga bolster if you've got one. Now don't worry if you don't have a yoga bolster, you can still do this. Um, if you have a few blankets like this one and then fold them up and then pile them on top of each other just to make about kind of this sort of height. Um, and then you can use another blanket to um, just for comfort to support the head but we will go through it in much more detail so don't worry you might want to watch the video first and then join me afterwards so get everything ready and then join me on the mat so before we start just a few words about back bending um, there are a few conditions where you should stay away from backbending and that one condition is not scoliosis but it's spondylolisthesis. So um, if you've got anything that prevents you from going further in, into an extension um, then this is not for you. It's best to check with a health professional, with your doctor um, to see if you're okay to practice backbending. But otherwise, if um, it's just scoliosis that you have and otherwise you are fit and healthy, then backbending is really, really good for you because remember everything, pretty much most of the stuff that we do is bending forward. So if you are sitting at your desk, um, if you are driving, if you're cooking, if you're doing any sort of activities where your arms come forward, your shoulders will come forward. So we're getting into this rounded position. Those muscles here at the front will get really tight. Um, and obviously if you have a rib hump, if you have a thoracic curve, you might notice that one of your shoulders is rolling forwards a little bit more than the other. So it's very important that we work on this extension and opening of the back. It's all a really, good to strengthen the back muscles and just to kind of keep us a little bit more in an upright position because otherwise if we don't do any back bending this sort of thing will happen and you know we'll start to round getting into this kyphotic back and naturally you get just cut kind of starting to go downwards so very important to work on those back muscles to make sure that they are strong and healthy and to to keep us upright so today I will show you my favorite beginner's backbending pose and I would strongly suggest if you have scoliosis that you start with this pose because remember there is a rotational component um, to your scoliosis. So not only do we have a sideward, a lateral curvature, but there's also a rotation which means that if we then go into extension one side of the spine will compress even more than the other side. So this is just something to bear in mind, which is why I would never um, start with a really strong back bend. Um, and you might have come across it in a yoga class, for example, wheel pose where you're lying on your back and then pushing up with the hands or bow pose where you're holding on to your, um, to your feet. So just to begin with, I'm not saying that you can never do these poses, but you need to be able to do them with awareness of the spine, which is why this beginner's pose is such a great way to start. So I'm going to stop talking so much and we're going to get into the practice. So I'm using my yoga bolster lengthways on my yoga mat. And then I just have the blanket here in front of me just kind of for a little bit of comfort. And I'm going to lie on top of this. So again, don't worry if you don't have a yoga bolster, you can recreate this with stacking up a few blankets but I do like these because um, I use them for quite a lot of different yoga poses. Good so I have the front of the pelvis um, supported on the bolster so I don't want to be up too high so this would be too high where the thighs are on the bolster so I'm going a little bit lower so it's just the front of the pelvis and this um, 
kind of helps to lengthen a little bit here in the in the lumbar spine and it can feel really nice to release the back just this position i'm not even doing anything i'm just kind of resting on here i use this for um in restorative yoga as well so i'm folding over my blanket just to support the head and then i'm staying here just for a few minutes and i need to come up because my microphone is being squashed um, but hopefully you get the idea just to kind of soften for a moment before we get into the back bending pose and then in terms of distance of the feet you can have the feet hip distance apart you can have them a little bit wider just see what feels good for you so what we're looking for in back extension is length across the whole of the spine so what we don't want to do is just start to compress in one part of the spine and you will feel it you will feel that there is compression when you start to come into cobra and it's only one part of the spine um, uh, that is that is bending so usually it's the most mobile part of the spine where the bending is happening so we're not going to go into too much detail about the the exact curvature um, we'll do that in my in my four weeks course um, it just takes a little bit more time it's a little bit more complicated but see before you start to come into your back bend can you create length where you need it so for me for example my main curve is a lumbar curve I know um, that the concave side is on the right side so I need to just lengthen the right side a little bit more so I'm sliding the right leg a little bit further away and then I can also just ever so slightly adjust my thoracic curve I have this um, slight thoracic curve to the right so I'm just kind of drawing the shoulder blade in a little bit more on the right side and even I can even kind of lean over um, to one side slightly so this is just to kind of adjust my starting position and then I'm really starting to lengthen imagine lengthening through the crown of the head and the tailbone so this already starts to kind of activate the spine and you can activate the legs here and, and start to straighten the legs or leave the knees down on the ground just see what feels better for you and then I'm slowly with a long spine start to explore coming up a little bit higher now i pretty much straight away feel a little bit of compression here on the left side um, so that tells me that i need to come down slightly there's two choices you can either support from the front so you can draw in from the front a little bit more or you can make sideways kind of slight sideways um, adjustment but we're always thinking about creating space so what can you do to create more space so I'm coming up again now this time it already feels a little bit better because I've, I've made tiny little adjustments or maybe because it's my second time so never discard something um, your body might just be telling you maybe not today but try again tomorrow so it's not a never and then slowly coming back down again okay so I like to work with a dynamic cobra um, for a few times so I'm going to inhale slowly come up and then exhale coming down so I'm backing off slightly I'm not going into my full um, back extension I'm just keeping it very low and just kind of exploring that length in the spine so you want the very even curve so a not even curve, just for you to see the difference, would be if I'm just kind of bending up and you could probably see it's not very pleasant. I'm just kind of bending into my lower back. That's not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for length. So I'm looking to create an even arch in the back. So with awareness coming up and then coming back down again. So if this is the first time that you're trying this, it might just be a tiny little bend see how it goes and then come back down and then when you had enough just resting for a moment so I'm going to slide forwards a little bit and you can um, rest the uh, the forehead onto your support so this is a little bit low I would have to come kind of bring it up a little bit more resting the forehead 
softening the shoulders. Really nice restorative pose. And then slowly bringing yourself up when you're ready. Good, so this is just an example of a beginner's backbend that I like to teach and I teach it in my um, four weeks yoga for scoliosis course as well where we can adjust it for the um, specific curvatures. Um, but once you've got this, once you've kind of established this, this length and this feeling of creating that even arch, you can take it pretty much into every single backbend. And I do practice some of the stronger poses. I do practice wheel pose, but I do it with very much awareness of where in my body can I create a little bit more length. And we're thinking about those concave parts of the spine. So I hope you enjoyed this little video. Please give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment. Um, I always really, really love to hear from you. Let me know if you've got any questions and I will see you very soon for the next video. Mm -hmm.